Mr. Chabot. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I want to thank the witnesses for sharing uh, their insight today so that we can get a better understanding of the collection use and uh, retention of personal data, which is obviously a very, very important uh, issue. Um, and I would note that uh, Chairman Nadler uh, and I worked uh, together on something called the Defense of Privacy Act back in the day uh, when I was actually chair and he was ranking member of the uh, Constitution uh, subcommittee and something that we worked on uh, pretty earnestly for, for quite some time. And back then, our primary concern was the potentially unconstitutional collection of personally identifiable information by government agencies. Uh, today, most people voluntarily surrender uh, far more information uh, to private companies than the federal government at that time uh, ever thought about uh, collecting. Uh, and that's what makes the situation that we're discussing today uh, so concerning to so many uh, Americans. The breadth and depth of information about nearly every American held by private companies is breathtaking and can easily be abused if adequate safeguards are not in place. Um, but domestic abuse of this information is not our only concern. We face significant challenges from abroad uh, as well. In addition to serving on this distinguished committee, I also serve as ranking uh, member of the House Foreign Affairs uh, Asia and Pacific Subcommittee. And on that committee, uh, we strive to counter the immense threat the People's Republic of China poses, uh, not only to Americans, but to the human rights of its own people. Uh, it's well known that the Chinese Communist Party uses a vast surveillance network to track, analyze, and manipulate its 1.4 billion citizens. The CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, sees information as power. Uh, their dream is a database that fully integrates everyone's movements, uh, phone records, spending history, interactions with friends, health records, social media posts, and on and on into one giant web of surveillance. Um, we're not China. Uh, the Fourth Amendment protects against warrantless searches and seizures. The Supreme Court has long uh, interpreted the Fourth Amendment uh, to safeguard the privacy and security of individuals against arbitrary invasions uh, by government officials. Uh, given the constant evolution of technology, virtually everything about an individual nowadays is online, uh, whether you intentionally put it there or not. Accordingly, Congress must continue to exercise oversight to ensure the reasonable expectation uh, to privacy that's guaranteed under the Fourth Amendment, uh, that we have to make sure it's not compromised uh, by law enforcement, uh, by you know, practicing uh, purchasing bulk data information without a warrant, or by foreign actors uh, who would steal the same information for their own uh, nefarious uh, purposes. Um, so now I'll get around uh, to a question. Um, now Chairman Goodlatt, let me ask, let me ask you this. Um, how should policymakers uh, balance the competing interests of the government's ability uh, to prevent crime and the civil liberty interest uh, to the American citizen? And I preface my question by noting that I know Versions of that have probably been asked. I was actually in the Foreign Affairs Committee up to this point, and so uh, I apologize if you've already been asked that. I don't think ways. you've been, been framed quite that way, and that's a very good question. It's obviously very important for law enforcement to have the tools they need <clears throat> to prevent crime, to uh, solve crimes that have already been committed, and to uh, effectively prosecute uh, the individuals who perpetrate those crimes. Uh, but I would argue that just in the last maybe two decades, the, it has gotten out of balance because the nature in which people chain, uh, sh store their data has changed so dramatically. Information that you, did, you didn't have stored, didn't have in writing anywhere at all um, in the past, now is stored about every aspect of your life. And it's stored by a third party, so the old uh, adage that if you don't hold it yourself, you're not subject to a warrant. If a third party holds it, uh, they can get it without a warrant. has got to be reviewed. The Supreme Court has recognized that in the Carpenter decision, in the Riley decision, uh, with regard to uh, cell phones, with regard to uh, 
geolocation information. And so I think it's important that the Congress recognize that if we wait for the courts to, to uh, step up and not address the underlying doctrine itself and say that given the amount of information that is stored today, that uh, a new standard has to be set. And that's what this bill attempts to do uh, in terms of the information that can be garnered by law enforcement without having to get a warrant, without having to show probable cause uh, that they need it. And so uh, I think you can achieve that balance. I think law enforcement can be effective, but I think they do need to operate under new rules given the, the unbelievable amount of information that they can simply walk around the Fourth Amendment and buy now instead of having to comply with traditional doctrine. Thank you very much. My, my time's expired, actually.